but it's only maybe an inch and a half. I need to make my nipples longer. <laughs> you want to help me stretch them? <laughs> there you go, Joe Dog. So the next thing we're going to do is speed work. So what we're going to do is teach Smokey and one of the other guys here at Super Training what to do for optimal speed work, how to mix up speed work to keep it viable and keep it making progress, and what that optimal speed work should look like. So when you see this video, you're gonna see the speed and the changes that we do on the eccentric phase to not only make speed work confusing to the muscles, but also progress our max effort lifts. Yeah. Slow oh, progressive build up. Yeah. So what's on the dock yet with this? All right, so we're doing speed work with a mixture of band and chain. We're gonna use the duffalo bar today because, why Smokey? Because uh, it increases the range of motion. What else? Deeper in the chest. What, what did I say I was going to look for? Bars. Something I don't have Special at my gym. Bar. Yeah, something different. So the thing of it is, is, we're setting up something that I can't set up at my gym. Got it. That's why we're doing it. So when you go someplace new, find stuff that you're unfamiliar with, even if it makes you feel weaker. And you'll find that you get way, way stronger, and your injury rates will go down way, 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 way lower. The same thing over and over again is what creates the overuse problem. So this being just a slightly different bar is going to cause a slightly different stimulus. Need a little boost? It's 3X normal, man. Huh? It's 3X normal man size. We don't have big boy. We only have to go up to 3X. Reps and sets. So we're gonna probably do eight sets of three. We're gonna take our time getting all the weights set up. I do not know what these, what smoke you should be using. I've never benched with him before. So I know what I need to use, but I need to figure out what they need to use. That way you can see what I'm looking for when I'm deciding speed mounts. It's not always about how strong you are, it's about how fast you can. barely touches, it's only maybe an inch and a half. I need to make my nipples longer. <laughs> you want to help me stretch them? <laughs> there you go, Joe Dog. Lock it in. Get. Stay tight. Ooh, Stay tight. Two. Nasty. Get. Three. You can see, even though Smokey's a pretty advanced bencher, I mean, he pushed that as hard as he could, and it threw it right into his chin. Yeah. Because you probably don't bench with this bar very much. No, I never bench with it. So I never bench with it either, but you didn't see me make that mistake, did you? So what, what was loose on you? <laughs> what what muscle was loose? All of it. No, no last. last back. Your back got loose. Yeah. To try to touch, up. you went like this. Yep. Instead of going like this. And that would have shot it straight. All right. That was nasty. Very good. Never bench you anything. The trick is though is always look for nasty. Always look for something that's unfamiliar and gonna make you do weird shit. Let's go, John. Come on, John. I'm going to take plate first jump. You guys take order. So we got 100 to 120 pounds of band, and we got about 80 pounds of chain. 135. Do you like handoffs? So, you do the fucking math. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So the hard part is with speed, is you gotta make it violent and perfect. If you're like, well I gotta slow it down to make it perfect, there's your weakness, right? So you wanna keep the bar speed up as fast as you can. And I'd rather see you go faster and make small mistakes so we can correct them. Okay. So if you go slow enough to perfect it, it's not really speed work. Just double the speed on the... It should be like a jump. Speed work should be light enough to feel like a plyometric. It should look like a boom! It shouldn't look like lifting weights. 
It should look like you're fucking trying to jump to the moon with it. Mm. Right? This. So, until so your bar speed goes up, we stay somewhere around here until it looks insanely fast. Sounds good. Come on, buddy. Let's go, John. Lock it. Get your lights back. Feel your lats not locked in. Okay. You're staying like this. Okay. You need to be. This. Now just leave that quarter on. I'm gonna slide the plate on top. So this is roughly about 400 at the top, and you're gonna see it's gonna look like a fucking plyometric. It's not gonna look like a bench press. The goal is 1.0 meters per second, and if you do it long enough with the right machinery, as, as i.e. an accelerometer, you'll know what that looks like. I can tell you right now that this will be right at or over 1.0. So if your speed work doesn't look this fast, you're going too heavy. Go, come on. Here we go. Oh, I don't know. Bar does have a wobble at the top. Yeah. Master it. It's all in the hands and back tight. One, two, three. Oh, I'll do it. Bend the elbow. Two, three, up, uh, uh, uh. Yes, yes, yes. Now, your bar's in your hands, right? Uh -huh. Ready to bench it. Mm -hmm. First thing you need to do, tighten it up. There. See what it just did? Yeah. Pull your shoulder blades down. Now, the next thing you need to do, squeeze your hands so fucking tight, it feels like you're going to break your knuckles. Okay. Now, when you bring your elbow, the bar goes straight down, straight up. Okay. Any looseness is going to cause it go back. to shimmy, uh -huh. right? If I want to punch you in the face, I'm going to do it right like that. But if I go here or here, I got no power. Okay. Same thing with the bench. Can you show me that one? Sure. Put a mouth guard in. Go and jump. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Put a mouth guard. I wasn't understanding the punch thing. Now, I'll show you what I've been playing with for like a year. So now what we do is we change the eccentrics. So if we master the downward phase and the optimal speed parameter, yeah. We try to maintain the same concentric speed, but we try to fuck ourselves up on the way down. So what we're gonna do now is called a ratchet eccentric. So you're gonna give me a one, I'm gonna show you a one, two, three, down, it's a stop each time. Right, so I'm actually making my body have to do weird shit. Also, a great way, if you're trying to build muscle mass in the off season, think about how much more time under tension we just did eccentrically by triples, right? That's where everybody screws up is, they think speed work is only one way. It's not true, it depends on the goal. So if you still want speed work in your training, but you want hypertrophy, emphasis that cycle, change your eccentric speeds. And now you just turn the speed day into a little bit more muscle mass. Makes sense. Uh, same weight? Yep, but you're gonna do the ratchet. Got it, one, two, go. three, go. Yep. Come on. Let's go, Smoke. One, two, three, go. Lock. Two, three, hey. It fucked your timing up? Yep. That's hard. When you can do that type of benching 10 different ways perfect, it will be the time in which you never fuck up a max attempt. You ever get up off of a bench, you went something heavy, and you did something wrong, like you shot it over your face yeah. or you turned your wrist wrong, <laughs> yep. you would start eliminating those problems because you've done it so many ways, you can do it 20 ways perfect. So no matter what. So then the normal way is like it. fucking cake. I like right. that. Yeah. One, two, three, up, out, out, out. for a little more muscle mass out of your training. This is the king shit right here. While still maintaining a conjugate thought pattern with speed days. Come on. Go, Matt. Come on. Up, out. Press. 
Just like that. Let's go. Let's go, Smoke. Here we go. Out one, two, three. Up. Lock. One, two, three, four, five. Hex. Four, five, Good. See how the first one was wonky, but by the third you, you learned it. So if you bench the same way in a whole fucking workout, it's 10 sets. By set three or four, you've mastered it. It's no longer that efficient at building new strength. That'd be something different. Yep. I would have done another warm up. No, I would only do a single two. Hey, you're supposed to do shit with us. What happened? Fuck it up, T. He ain't no killer T today. Let's go, go John. John. Five, five One, two, three, up, out. One, two, three, four, five, up. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, up. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, up. Yes. Now, we're gonna pause halfway down, five seconds. Would you normally do all these variations for the workout, or would you pick one of the variations for the workout? So if you're less advanced, let's say you guys Fuck that first one up right yeah. pretty bad, but all mine look the same no matter how we do it. That's when you need to change almost every set. But if you're having complications and hiccups, pick one or two and maybe only modify one or two. But as you get better, you need a bigger base of things to create new change. So for me, every set has to be different. And are you doing eight to ten sets? Typical? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I have the weight a little heavier and I can still maintain some of that bar speed, I would drop the sets down a little. So let's say I want to use 225 today. A little bit out of the range. I would only do six. And if I go a little bit lighter, say just a plate and a dime, I might do 10 or 12 sets, right? But the total volume is still really close to the same. This is a, this is a normal speed day weight for you though. Yes, exactly. And you're we'll go, 600 we'll go red band, one chain, red band one week, then red band one chain the next week, then red band two chain, then red band three chain, and then strip it down and did take it to free weight and do 10 sets of 10. At my strongest, I was doing 10 sets of 10 with 405. Yep. So. All right, so give me a, when you see it stop, count five. Okay. Come on. Up. Up. One, two, three, four, five. Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So what I like about that particular method is if you have a video, which most people do now of their maxes, let's say I'm benching and I'm, boom, I get here, right here with like 622. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that spotter as close to it as I can, and that's where I stop. So the next time I hit that position, I'm used to that bar being slowed down and staying statically tight so I can push away and get it. Makes sense. Right? So you're finding that, that particular sticking point and putting more tension there. <laughs> what I really like to do though is always on the concentric phase, all I teach my body is to fucking boom. There's no weird shit on the way up. It's as fast as I can. So you can play around more with the eccentric portion of the lift, but on speed day, I would keep the concentric portion as explosive and violent as possible. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four, five, get it! One, two, three, four, five, get it! One, two, three, four, five, get it! Yep. You guys totally fucking your up? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Come on, let's go, John. I don't carry on. One, two, three, up, out. One, two, three, four, five. Go, get it! Up. Two, three, four, five. Go. Two. One, two, three, four, five. Go. So that first one, you dipped your chest. Yeah, I felt that. So that might happen on a max effort. Okay. Lift, you get down here and you go like this, instead of like this, pulling it up. Yeah. So ask me that question again. Uh, so if you do too much weight yeah. on speed day, like I yeah. said, you're a 600 plus pound bencher. Mm -hmm. You got 185 of bar weight mm -hmm. on there. Yep. What, I mean. What, yeah, so my training wow. You know, hipster. Yeah. He benches 572 and he uses one plate, a dime, and a five. Okay. So he's 50 pounds behind on the bench. He uses roughly 30 pounds less. But we dialed, we dialed that with a machine to know exactly what weight he should be at. Based off speed. Accelerometric speed. Yeah. yeah, over one meter per second. So the point is, in my personal opinion and my personal experience, was 
when I was benching six plates, it was 585. When I was benching 585, I was using this amount of accommodative resistance at 225, right? That's what I would use, 225. Yeah. And I just felt like my max days were getting harder, not easier. So and me being slightly smart, I said, well, fuck it. Let's take it. Just take the speed work down to 185 and see if I recover better. A year and a half later of only using 185 at pure bar weight, bench goes from 585 to 611 after squatting the world record. So that's when I realized it wasn't yeah. about the amount of weight on the bar. And the weird thing is, is the stronger you get, the more cautious you have to be of overtraining this because you can fire fast. So when you're super strong, you actually are firing at 100%. So you might be firing because your bench is good, but not elite yet. Yeah. You might only be firing 90%. So that other 10% you're not achieving. So the better you get, the smarter you have to be because you can do more damage. Right, if me and you both go today and get in the monolith to max in the squat, who's gonna be sore, me or you? Me, because I'm gonna use yeah. more weight. Because I'm closer to my ceiling limit. It's going to take you more time. Though. Exactly. So the stronger you get, the smarter you have to be with this stuff. Yeah. And sometimes the best way to go is the other direction that you think. So what about so someone who's not an elite lifter on your level? Yeah. Is it so still the same? If you're not an elite lifter, you need to go talk to Mark or me or somebody else that is very, very skilled in the speed yeah. work if you're going to use speed work to get better. You need to have them look at you and tell you where you need to be weight-wise. Right? I just told you guys, I guessed around a quarter and I was right. Yeah. So you got, you guys both bench roughly 400, yeah. and this is the fucking weight you're using on the bar. Yeah. And a 600-pound bench is only another 45. Yeah. Right? Because it's about force production. It's not about weight. It's not yeah. about mass. It's about acceleration. Completely different side of the force equation. Right? You don't want... So if you look at it in a force equation standard, it's just kind of easy for people to understand. Imagine getting hit by a dump truck. At five miles an hour, it's going to hit you really hard and it's not going to stop very fast because it's so heavy, right? But it's not going to hurt you near as bad as a 50 caliber bullet coming at you at 3,000 meters per second. It's going to blow you in half. Why is the dump truck not going to cut you in half at five miles an hour, but the bullet is going to cut you in half and only weighs 50 grams? Point is, it's acceleration. So this power is created by acceleration, not by mass, i.e. weight on the bar. It has nothing to do with it. It's all about force production. On the accelerative side, mass day, how much should be determined on max effort day. Yeah. How much can you do is only worried about on the day that you go heavy. The day that you go fast should be how fast can you move it. Right? So if you're a little too light and a little too fast, it's going to have way more benefit than going a little too heavy and a little too slow. And beat you up. Right. It'll beat you up and it won't transfer over to max. Yeah. That's why I dropped the percentages down between 30 and 40 percent versus Louis talking about 50 60. Yeah. You know why Louis talked about 50 60? Because 75% of their max days was in gear. That's a lot. So their speed day was the only day they got anything wrong in. So when he would talk about speed work and everybody goes, well, why does Louis talk about 50 60? Because on their max day, they had a bench shirt on. That meant that the muscles got protected when they lifted those bigger weights. But what if you're raw, like all of us are now? Yeah. If you're raw, those percentages have to change drastically because now you're getting muscle work on the max day and muscle work on the speed day. Make sense? Makes a lot of sense, yeah. So that's why. Damn. All right, I think it's good. We're done. So in closing, you got to see everybody's optimal weight, optimal speed. You got to see different eccentric ways of doing speed work that not only are going to confuse the body and make it get stronger, but also make speed work have a little bit more of a hypertrophy emphasis and setting in a conjugate realm. So if your speed work doesn't look this fast, lighten it up and make sure that you're not going too heavy on your speed work so that you keep making progress down the road.